I begin today's Sant Mont Satsang podcast with a quote from the 16th century Indian spiritual master Dadu Dayal, a great saint of Rajasthan, who outlines the Sant Mont vision of the spiritual life to be pursued during our time here on planet Earth. Dadu Dayal. Wherever one's thought dwells, there will that person rest. At his pleasure he may go to the delusion of unreality, or he may merge into the Lord of the Self, where thou keepest thy mind while living. To that abode shalt thou go after death. The soul finds lodging in the place wherein it has hitherto been immersed. When one's whole being is engaged in repeating the name of God, that indeed is called repetition. The self then blossoms forth within, and the Lord reveals himself, O Dadu. Do the repetition of God and forget him not. Fulfill the purpose of thy birth by practicing concentration. Be steadfast in the remembrance of God. Practice meditation with love and sing the glory of God. The human body is the door to salvation, says Dadu. The lover is converted into the beloved. That indeed is called true love. Forgetting his own ego, he remains absorbed in the one. says Sant Dadu Dayal. Recognize the path to your beloved, O travelers, and take the route of the anguished lover in separation. Keep the Master's grace in your thoughts and reflect upon his pure teachings. Develop love and devotion with endearment and keep the thought of the Creator always before you. Try to merge yourself in God like water and water. Fix your mind within by following the path of the sound current. A yearning will arise. Make then an intense and anguished call. Repeat the name of your beloved day and night, again and again and again. With care in thought, word and deed, you will cross to the other shore. The Sant Mat Sat Song podcast is a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Today, some teachings of Dadu Dayal, also Huzur Baba Sawan Singh, Sant Kripal Singh, Baba Somanath, Baba Ram Singh, Sant G, and other sources on how the third eye is the doorway to the heavens and Simran is the key to the door. Up first, I get out my Sant Mont glossary to define some terms. The single eye, third eye, the seat of the soul, the eye of the soul or spirit, Tishra Til. The third eye or single eye atop the physical region, the same as the sixth or Ajna Chakra. The third eye connects with the Shiv Netra or Crown Chakra by means of the razor-thin Brahma Nadi connection. The third eye or subtle eye, the portal through which the spirit entity or the soul or surat passes from the third into the second grand division of creation. Defining the term surat. Surat, the attention faculty of the soul, or the face of the soul, which is understood to be an outward expression of the soul. It also means one of the two faculties left to the soul after 
leaving the physical realm of the sense organs behind. Seeing is also referred to as nairet, the soul's faculty of seeing, the eyes of the soul, if you will. The term surat also refers to the hearing fac faculty. The intrinsic hearing faculty of the soul is called surat. So, in other words, the soul has transcendental seeing and hearing abilities. The soul has its own spiritual eyes and ears. And through the power of seeing and hearing, focusing one's attention upon what one sees within or what one hears within, this is a means of navigation in inner space, the kingdom of the heavens, the world of within, when one is meditating, has left the physical world behind. One has the ability to see and hear spiritually. A key practice to begin meditation, to reach the third eye center, is known as Simran, the repetition of various sacred names of God. These names vary from lineage to lineage, from school of spirituality to school of spirituality. Whatever the Master gives you at the time of your initiation, those are the sacred names that you repeat. Simran is a term that means remembrance, as in remembering God by repeating his name or various sacred names of God. Simran, as defined by the Sant Mat Glossary, the repetition of names or thoughts. In Sant Mat, the Simran of worldly thoughts is controlled through the Simran of the five charged names, repeated by an initiate throughout the day and night as often as possible as a spiritual technique to keep recentering and refocusing, practicing the presence of God throughout the day as well as Simran is done when one is sitting for meditation, is beginning meditation practice, as a means of collecting the thought currents at the third eye center. The words of Simran are also used as a password of sorts to the higher planes, as well as protection these are words of protection from negative power influences. So these names of God you use to cry for help, to shield, to protect yourself as well. In inner regions as well as here in the physical realm also. Simran, the repetition or remembrance of God by repeating his name or names. The constant repetition of five charged names provided by the perfect living master done mentally with the tongue of thought for the purpose of stilling the chattering thoughts of the mind. It constitutes the first step of the spiritual ladder. Simran, the repetition of sacred names of God, is the first step of the spiritual ladder and is the key to the practice of listening to the divine sound within. More on that in a second. Other terms for Simran include the prayer of the name, Japa, Zikr, and Manas Jap. When one is doing Simran, especially at the beginning of one's meditation practice, you grow accustomed to listening within. This practice of Simran, in addition to being the first step of meditation practice in order to reach the third eye center, is preparing you for another kind of listening, another kind of hearing. You are hearing these names as you are repeating them mentally with the tongue of thought in your mind. It is a kind of mental chant. And this inner listening is preparing you to eventually hear another kind of name or nam, the name of God that repeats itself in heavenly places. The sound current, the audible life stream, 
the true name above alphabetical names reverberating in the heavens, the divine sound. So when you are repeating the sacred names, this is preparing you. This is getting you accustomed to the concept of listening within, preparing you for another kind of name you will soon be hearing in meditation. A definition of the term Surat Shabad Yoga meditation from the Santmat Glossary. The means of reconnecting with God, literally yoking the soul or the soul's hearing faculty or surat to the sound current, the Shabad, also provides the power of practical discernment, enabling the attention to rise higher by moving on through with the Nairat's power of seeing, gaining absorption into the inner light. So, Surat Shabad Yoga Meditation is referring to working with the attention faculty of the soul, working with the soul's spiritual ability to see and hear for the purpose of merging into the Supreme Being. Divinization or theosis of God by contemplating his light and hearing his sound. The surat is literally yoked to the Shabbat, the divine power, the word, the logos, the supreme nature of God, the spirit that's flowing back to the Godhead once again. The soul has eyes, has a form of transcendental seeing, as well as the soul has ears, transcendental hearing, focusing all of your attention within upon what you see as well as what you hear is your means of transportation in inner space. This is how you navigate. This is how you travel within. This is soul travel. This is going within and exploring inner space, the kingdom of the heavens that are within you. The soul has eyes and ears. Through its faculty of seeing and its faculty of hearing, you are able to explore inner space, navigating the planes, the realms, the spheres that are within. Sant Kirpal Singh, Simran, or constant remembrance of God, is a tonic for the soul. It makes the will grow stronger from day to day. This is from Sant Ji or Jeb Singh. On Simran, the remembrance and repetition of the sacred names of God. When Simran is properly done for some time, a state of divine intoxication comes upon the spirit and blessed calmness is experienced. As I mentioned before, Simran is the first step of Sant Mat meditation. Before you get to seeing within and hearing within, you have to access the third eye center, the seat of the soul. Now for most people, they are disciples of their mind. They constantly are just left with mind and the world of the five senses, and they are disciples of the material plane and the mind and can never break free. Everything is either a physical activity or a thought, belief, theology, an idea, and those are the two areas that constitute their universe, their cosmos. But when we go to the spiritual level, when we go within, we are entering into the interior castle, that unexplored realm of within, the kingdom of the heavens, not a physical thing, and not about thought or thinking or beliefs or theology or ideas or impressions or memories of the brain, of the mind, but spirit, another part of our being. That's what meditation is about. That's where we go. We are transcending body and we are transcending 
mind. We are doing what most people do not do. Beach themselves on an alien shore, continuing the process of evolution, exploring the far country, another shore, the spiritual plane, through the third eye center. And this begins with the repetition of sacred names. In order to relax, in order to focus, in order to begin the meditation process to transcend body and mind, where most people never leave. It, when, we, when we repeat the sacred names of God, we begin the process of the ascension of the soul, the withdrawal from the world of the five senses and the mundane thoughts of the mind to enter through a kind of spiritual doorway or portal into the spiritual realm within. This is from Baba Ram Singh. Suffice it to say that as a first step, a disciple should concern himself with the Simran of the Five Names as key words or passwords to enter into the Holy Hill Fortress of the Inner Self. And he need not dwell on the meanings of the Five Names. This is from a Satsang Discourse by Baba Ram Singh. Sawan Singh Ji Maharaj once said, Mind is not going to listen in the normal course. You will have to force it to listen. And only then the mind will be able to focus. Baba Ram Singh, you have to keep on doing Simran. And gradually, with the continuous practice of Simran, Dhyan, and Bhajan, only the mind can focus and come up to the third eye see the radiant form of the master and hear the sound current. So Simran is very essential and if one is continuously doing Simran, if one continuously does Simran, however unfocused the mind is, it gradually gets to the third eye. As one keeps on doing Simran repeatedly and regularly, the mind keeps becoming more and more pure. And as the mind becomes pure, it is able to come up to the third eye and see the radiant form of the master within. So the masters have always insisted upon the continuity of practice of Dion, Bhajan, and Simran, inner seeing, inner hearing, and the repetition of these sacred names of God. Baba Ram Singh, we often do Simran or Dion Bhajan for a few days and then leave it. This way we do not maintain continuity and we do not practice as it should be done. Masters insist that the practice has to be continuous every day without a break. Baba Ram Singh. Quoting Sawan Singh and then providing some commentary how most people are just disciples of their own mind and the physical realm and never do escape to that neglected area of the self, the Atman, the spirit, the Surat, the true self, our true nature, that covered up, covered over, true nature, Buddha nature, Christ nature. It's been given many different names. Most people just never leave the chatter of the mind. Mind is not going to listen in the normal course. You will have to force it to listen, says Huzur Baba Sawan Singh. We have to beach ourselves on a foreign shore, like the first fish evolving, reaching toward another kind of existence in another realm. So, Simran is very essential to that process of reaching the third eye center. Baba Ram Singh is saying that most people are very sporadic. You know, they do meditation for a few days and then leave off and then you know, read something, hear about it, you know, go to a satsang a month later and are reminded of it and then try again, but are very sporadic, hit and miss, mostly miss. But he is saying that continuity is not maintained and this isn't how it should be done. Masters insist, says Baba Ram Singh, that the practice has to be continuous every day without a break. He is also saying here that meditation doesn't have to be perfect. It's just there's this need to be consistent. Keep at it every single day. 
So Simran is very essential, and if one continuously does Simran, however unfocused the mind is, it gradually gets to the third eye center. Unquote. Says Baba Ram Singh in a satsang discourse, we don't have to be perfect, we just have to keep at it. And, like anything else, we get better at it as we continue to practice over time. Baba Somanath once said, Do the Simran, aiming your attention within, like an arrow at its target. Then the door of Shabad will burst open. The sound current will eventually manifest. Says Baba Ram Singh and his spiritual master, Baba Somanath, here. Do the Simran, aiming your attention within, like an arrow at its target. Then the door of Shabad will burst open. The following is from my article, A History of Simran Practice in the Sant Tradition, The Path of the Masters, about the many names of the one nameless god, Anami Parush. The nameless god has been given many names over the centuries. There are countless divine names used as mantras or sacred words of remembrance in various schools of spirituality. In the Dadu Panth, that sacred name of God is not a secret name, but it is a public domain sort of name for God at the highest level. And that name is Satya Ram. Satya Ram. Satya Ram. The name Ram actually was very frequently mentioned in the hymns of Guru Kabir and some of those other early saints of the saint tradition of India. The name Ram is found in the hymns of saints like Guru Kabir, Sant Namdev, and other classic saints of India. Some in Sant Mat receive a single name, others a longer Guru Mantra phrase. Some are given the five names, or Panch Nam, consisting of five holy names of God. These are revealed at the time of initiation into Sant Mat, or Surat Shabad Yoga. These same five names have been used for centuries in certain branches of Sant Mat, connected with Kabir and associated with Sant Dharam Das, Sant Darya Sahib, Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, and Sant Radhaswami Sahib. Others have been given five Sufi or Persian names of God at the time of their initiation into Surat Shab Yoga meditation. These five Sufi or Islamic mystical names have the same essential meaning as the five Indian names used in some forms of Sant Mat. And as with the Indian names, also correspond to five basic inner planes or regions. In one of the ancient Jewish Gnostic paths of antiquity, a group known as the Sethians, there was also a five-named or panch, nam type mantra approach, only using five Hebrew names that have been found in Coptic texts of Egypt, the Nag Hammadi Library. Those Sethian names were also associated with certain heavenly regions. Others in Santmat are given the Most High Name of God known as Radhaswami, the Lord of the Soul, associated with the Eighth Plane, to use in Simran practice along one's journey through all of the various states and stages within during meditation. A few Santmat lineages use a two-syllabled sacred word revealed at the time of initiation, and it represents a name for the soundless one. So names, sacred names, may vary from lineage to lineage, from path to path, but whatever your master gives you at the time of initiation, those are the key names to repeat. In the classic bhajans and banis, the mystic poetry and hymns of the saints of India, appear numerous names of God. One can read verses exhorting devotees to repeat many names of the nameless God with refrains like, Repeat the name of Ram. Repeat the name of Radhaswami. Repeat the name of Hari. Repeat the name of Govinda. Repeat the name of Vitala. Repeat the name of Allah. Repeat the name of Who. 
The true spirit of Simran practice is bhakti or love, devotion. Simran is a term which means remembrance. The spiritual practice of remembering or being mindful of God by repeating his name or names. Devotees sing or chant various names of God. Higher spiritually and more within is the practice of manas jap, the mental repetition of God's name or names with the tongue of thought. In other words, chanting names of God within one's mind. The saints have always placed much greater emphasis upon mental simran over vocal chant. One can repeat the five names out loud for a couple of minutes or so, but take it within. The focus is within. It's about going within. And the mental repetition or manas jap takes you within. There is, however, more to Simran than the repeating of sacred names. Simran must be approached with the right attitude, the right spirit. For one's intent determines how successful this practice will be and what effect it will have upon one's consciousness as you repeat those names. Simran has never been intended to be a dry or lifeless mantra practice or vain repetition. The path of the saints is a bhakti path, a path of love and devotion for the Supreme Being. Thus, the true masters have always instructed their students to repeat God's name with love and devotion, as a lover calling out to one's beloved, the Lord of Love. As Guru Kabir once said, keep your mind ever engrossed in the name of the Lord, as the lover's mind is ever engrossed in the beloved. He never forgets her for a single moment. Through day and night, he remembers her. Happiness rests in ever-repeated Simran. Sorrow and suffering is removed by Simran. Kabir declares with utmost force and clarity, practice this Simran and be one with the Lord, says Guru Kabir. What then is the practice of the name? It is a form of interior prayer by which a person learns to keep his or her attention always in the Supreme Lord in every circumstance and situation at all moments, as often as possible throughout the day, at the very least. It is a form of inner remembrance that leads to a heightened awareness beyond the limitations of the physical world and the portals of death. Through meditation on the name, or Nam Bhakti, one learns to draw one's attention away from the outer world and reach the third eye center. Practice the presence of God, as Brother Lawrence of the Resurrection once described it as. Repeating God's name and the answer to this prayer of God's name is God consciousness. The presence of God is the answer to this prayer. The repetition of Simran words is a form of protection and spiritual guidance, not only within, but also as you travel about in this body, in this life, in the material plane. Take the name of God wherever you go, in this plane or in the planes or realms beyond. Says Kripal Singh, Simran of the Divine Names introverts the mind and weans it from worldly thoughts and mundane matters until it gets stilled and is equipoised. Just as we need food for the body, so do we need food for the soul. The Simran of Nam or Word is an elixir of life and in fact a panacea, a healing for all ills. A panacea or healing of all ills, physical, mental, accidental, or ordained. 
Simran is a food for the spirit, and when the spirit is strong and healthy, it will charge the body with vital currents of life and light, dispelling all darkness from head to foot. It is the bread of life spoken of by Christ when he declared, you cannot live on bread alone. But you can live on the name of God alone, says Kirpal Singh. Simran and Dion, meditation, flood the spirit with the waters of life. Spirit come to, comes to its own. Spirit comes to its own, rises in its latent godhood. And like a tumultuous mountain stream rushing headlong toward the ocean of life, which is its perennial source and merges therein, losing its separate identity. There are no limitations as to time and place for Simran. Simran may be done at any time and at any place. May be done at any time and at any place, sitting or standing, walking or in bed, but it must be done in a state of conscious wakefulness, says Kripal Singh. Early morning hours, Amrit Vela, the hour of elixir, is the best of all times for Simran, says Kripal Singh. Simran must be done slowly, and the words are to be repeated or thought out with clarity. The whole process is to be carried out with love, devotion, and single-minded attention to ensure quick results. It's all about attention, <laughs> Kripal Singh. When properly done for some time, a state of divine intoxication comes upon the spirit and blessed calmness is experienced. All worldly thoughts vanish like thin air and the spirit feels freed from the body tenements and is irresistibly drawn inward by the unseen power. Kripal Singh quoting Kabir on Simran. Kabir says, Comforting is God's name. All ills it cures. Remembrance of God's name leads to him besides. A person of Simran stands far above all humanity. They are much more blessed than the rest. Says Kripal Singh, Simran to be very effective, must be constant and ceaseless. Simran must be done at all costs. Constant remembrance of God is life-giving to the devotee. Pray we with all our heart in the silence of the soul. Shut off the world without to unveil the truth within, says Kripal Singh. Aren't these wonderful? These are fantastic sayings. Wrapping up today's edition of the Sant Satsang podcast on how the third eye is the doorway to the heavens and Simran is the key to that door. Sant Dadu Dayal of Rajasthan. One who, turning the attention inward, brings it within the self and fixes it on the radiant form of the Master is indeed wise, O Dadu. Search for the Beloved close to the place where from the sound emerges and thou shalt find him, saith Dadu. There is solitude there and there is luster of light. Fix thine attention within, O valiant servant. So does Dadu proclaim. The one who is merged in the word, who is pierced by the arrows of the master's instructions, who is absorbed with the one alone, only that person is rightly set on the path, says Dadu Dayal. God is within all beings. He accompanies all and is close by. Musk is within the musk, dear. And yet the musk, dear, goes around in search of musk. The self knows not God, though God is within the self. Being deaf to the holy sound of the Master, sadly does he wander. He for whom thou searchest in the world dwells within thyself. Search for the Lord within thyself, the imperceptible one, hath 
the master revealed, says Dadu Dayal. The knowledge of the sound current imparted by the master merges one easily into truth. It carries me to the abode of my beloved, saith Dadu. This fragile and transient human life is speedily coming to an end. It is high time that we seek refuge in the Lord of Love. Only while living as a human being can the work be accomplished, not after death, says Dadu. Recognize the path to your beloved, O travelers, and take the route of the anguished lover in separation. Keep the Master's grace in your thoughts and reflect upon his pure teachings. Develop love and devotion with endearment. And keep the thought of the Creator always before you. Try to merge yourself into God like water and water. Fix your mind within by following the path of the sound current. A yearning will arise. Make then an intense and anguished call. Repeat the name of your beloved day and night, again and again and again. With care and thought, word and deed, you will cross to the other shore, says Dadu. Dadu.